Hey everyone, it's Friday, and welcome to another Weekend Projects Hangout on Air, uh, powered by Radio Shack. Today, we'll be talking about the touchless 3D tracking interface. Um, so my guest today is uh, Winter Woods, an uh, engineering intern at Make Labs. How's it going, Winter? Hi. And, um, you know, first, before we start, uh, thanks for uh, sticking in with us. We had some technical difficulties today, but uh, another thing is uh, the maker of this uh, latest iteration of the project, Steve Hobley, he was... Uh, Recently diagnosed with some strep throat and couldn't join us today. So, Steve, uh, thanks. Um, anyway, I hope you get better soon. Um, and then also, this project was an original Instructables build uh, that was based off of a project that uh, Kyle McDonald put together. So, uh, shout out to him as well. Uh, and we'll just be going, going over this basic Arduino project, some simple supplies you have. Uh, Winter's got a really cool demonstration that we can screenshot with you. And, um, Winter, how did you actually even get dragged into this to begin with? I mean, is this your first introduction to the project today? Uh, no. Uh, I spent about two days with it, maybe. Um, someone handed me the project, told me to start making it work. Yeah. So I spent a day and a half playing with the software, trying to get it actually working with my laptop. Um, there were some changes to processing, which is software that it uses, okay. that made it stop displaying correctly. Oh, really? OK. Well, um, so, so um, do you have a working model uh, on the desk that you could show before we yes. show the live demo? Yes. Because uh, basically, for, for people who aren't in, uh, knowledgeable about the project to begin with, it's basically like this half cube of pieces of cardboard and aluminum foil. And then you just hook up an Arduino, um, and it me uh, measures the time that it takes for that, that plate, essentially, to charge up. Uh, it's like a little capacitive plate using the cardboard and tinfoil. And then uh, based upon the time it takes for that capacitive plate to charge up, um, you can sort of calculate how far your hand is from the surface. So yeah, perfect. There's, there's the example of the actual project itself. Um, you see it's just basically take three pieces of cardboard, 12 inches by 12 inches, and um, the trick for this is putting the aluminum foil with the adhesive and making it nice and flat, um, as Winter did, and making sure that where the corners of the cardboard meet, you don't have the um, aluminum foil make contact. You want those to be completely separate. Um, if, they, if they touch or they make contact, it'll short out, and you'll get kind of funky readings. Um, but what this does is it creates three capacitive plates um, as Winter can show us, and then basically you can get these 3D, um, three axes of motions uh, that shows back up on your screen using the processing, which, Winter, sorry, I interrupted. You were talking about the, the issues with processing. Um, it's not a big deal. They're, they made some changes to processing several versions ago that just changed how um, 3D models were displayed on the screen. Oh, okay. So it, wasn't showing correctly when I ported it over to the new version. Um, so I spent some time with it, and works fine now. Cool. Can you give us a, uh, a demo of your screenshot? So essentially, this is the program that processing runs, and it runs on your computer. Is that right? Uh, that is correct. OK. So you have your laptop up. You have the Arduino plugged in. You have the Arduino basically hooked up to the, the cardboard and the aluminum foil plates. And then you can play like a virtual game tic-tac-toe is one example. Uh, so here's the, the demonstration. I didn't actually quite get tic-tac-toe working. Oh, OK. Um, I still but as you can see, it does react. Yeah, you can't see me moving my hand. No, we have a really nice screenshot of you frozen time. <laughs> Um, moving You're my hand around sure. here, uh, you may be able to see the demo. Maybe, Maybe we should uh, swap out a screenshot and then come back in. Because it is a really cool demo. Basically, it creates this sort of like um, 3D structure um, in processing the program. And then as uh, Winter moves his hand in the different axes of the uh, different capacitive plates, you can see this like sort of orange glowing ball sort of move through these stacks and arrays of the cubes. Um, and it was working really well right before the Hangout went live, so maybe it's one of those glitches with the interwebs. But, oh, bummer. 
Well, we also, there's a great video um, that we can link to at the bottom of this Hangout. Um, and it really is cool because in that uh, video, Tyler Moskwite, who's kind of leading you through the build, um, he puts his hand over the plate, and uh, the graphic artists have been able to kind of show you, like, the EMF field like um, of the charging plate and sort of visualize what's going on with the plates. And then you stack it up in 3D, and you have these really cool graphics that sort of show um, the electronics field and how it's interacting, but yeah, it's too bad. Winter, I guess it's not gonna work out while we're on air. Okay, I'm gonna try one more thing here. If it's... Okay, cool. Yeah, let's persevere. All right, can you see this? Nope. Nope. Okay. <clears throat> That's a bummer. Yeah. Check out the video for, for people who are watching. Check out the video. Um, and then, Winter, what was your experience as far as b putting the circuit together? Is is it frustrating? Is it complicated? There's, there's only a few components you can pick up from Radio Shack. Um, but as far as putting them together, was that difficult? Um, so I, I wasn't actually the person who built this version of it. Oh, okay. But having looked at the diagram, it doesn't seem very hard at all. Um, it's fairly basic components. Yeah. I think there's a few resistors, uh, some wire, and an Arduino. Yeah, yeah. The So the thing to note, I was looking at the instructions, um, and I built one at home actually last year for uh, one of the Maker Camp sessions. But the thing I had trouble with was I was originally using just a bunch of wires that I had laying around at home, but the build instructions call for shielded cable and um, like an audio jack, and, and that's really actually important and could provide some frustration for people if you just kind of used some generic stranded wire off, off your shelf um, because you need to have it shielded because basically when you're connecting up your, your board, your Arduino, to these capacitive plates, if it's not shielded properly, you'll get this kind of interference. I don't know if maybe you were experiencing... Um, when the circuit was working and you're using processing, sometimes the, the orb that's kind of floating on the screen, it kind of jitters, and that's due uh, to signal interference. Um, that's what I found, at least, when I built my project. So it was kind of... You, you want to make sure you use the shielded wire. Um, yeah, what else? I mean, what was... It, any other tricks kind of getting it to go? Or it, once it was put together, it was pretty, pretty good? Once it was put together, it was pretty straightforward. Um, it does jitter, and I think that's just part of how it works. Um, it's very sensitive to any sort of movements or anybody walking by even. Oh, okay. Um, there were times when I would have someone standing behind me and it would affect how it reacted to my hand moving. Oh, wow. Um, but other than that, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, Works really well. Yeah, it works really well when the screenshot's working. Um, yeah, and, and you know, the, it's cool because this process has gone through a couple iterations. Like I said, Steve Hobley picked it up, and, and he did the current um, Weekend Projects build. Um, but we also put together a uh, kind of like a blog post of some uh, makers who have been using the Weekend Projects and sort of hacking them and modifying them. So, um, you know, a Brigham Young student um, by the name of... Uh, Down Briggs. Uh, he's a mechanical engineer. Um, he sort of put together this really cool interface where he sort of modified the uh, 3D tracking interface, but he used it instead of showing processing and, and showing like a display. He used it to control the uh, his C perch, uh, a little ROV uh, robot that he put together. So that was kind of a cool way to use the basic components um, and the basic setup, but then apply it to like you know robotics control. So you'd have your arm, and the way you move your arm in three axes would control three different motors on the robot and then control its propulsion system. So uh, it's a really cool kind of aspirational, um, inspirational project that you can modify pretty easily once you get the, the hang of, you know, what are the components for, uh, why do you have to have the resistors and the shielded cable, and, and how do you kind of interface with the processing. So. I thought it was a really good uh, project to get started with Arduino because the, the code's all provided, you know? Um, I don't know about your experience, but I'm not a very strong programmer by any means, so it was nice having all the code there. Um, yeah. It certainly helps. Yeah. Do you want to try one more time to do a screen share before we... Yeah. Because it's a really cool demo if it gets working, but we're having some problems. Do you see this? No, it's just a really nice picture of you smiling in the camera. Frozen. Ah. Bummer. 
Let's see. Well, yeah, I mean, thanks, uh, Winter, for hanging out. Um, sorry we couldn't get that demonstration going. But again, if you if you watch the video, there's a really cool detailed uh, Weekend Projects 3D tracking interface video um, for people who are watching on uh, Google+. Plus. They can check that out. It'll be posted under the Hangout comments. And um, it really gives you a cool visualization of kind of how the, the surfaces are working together and you're mapping the 3D interface to get, like, this sort of three-dimensional um, measurement system going and with the Arduinos and all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, again, Winter, thanks for hanging out and doing, trying to do the demo. And, thanks for um, having me. Yeah, everyone else, have a great weekend, and be sure to check out uh, your local Radio Shack for the parts and do the build and let us know what you think. We'd love to hear comments. So uh, thanks, Winter. See you later. Bye.